Hey guys, my name is Dave, and welcome to another video and another series that we're going to be starting. Um, called, in case you haven't seen it in the title yet for some reason, History Talk. Now, since this is the first episode, let me go ahead and clarify what this series is actually going to be. I'm going to be discussing a figure or group that is from history, that had an impact on history of some sort, and just kind of talk about what that was, and then discuss, in a sense, how, in my opinion, it had impacted me. Now, for a starting episode, since I am quite a music-type person, like, I've been into music for an extremely long time, I am going to be talking about an artist. One that for some reason, a lot of people don't know much about. And by that, I mean about the person, not about the artist and what they make. Now that being said, and sometimes they don't even know stuff about that a lot. But I digress. Let's go ahead and jump into our first icon. The name of our first individual, or our individual for this video, is going to be a man named Rostam, or Ross. I apologize if I say this wrong. Sipin Bagdazarian. Or Bagdazarian, I think is how you actually say that. Now, not many people actually know this name, but for those who do, for those who do already know who I'm talking about, for those who don't, this man is way more commonly known as David Seville. This probably got many of you who are watching this who didn't know that original name. Once I said that second, you were like, oh, okay. David Seville was a stage name for this man who... More accurately, the name would have been Ross Big Desarian. Again, I apologize if I'm saying that wrong for anybody who actually does know about that name. Senior. This guy is also well more commonly known as the founder of the group Alvin and the Chipmunks. Many people probably caught the attention for me on that one. But I digress. Alvin and the Chimp Chipmunks, that's a tongue twister for me for some reason, <laughs> is not the core reason why I chose Ross as the icon, historical icon for this video. And yes, it does have to do with the music to a degree, but it's not particularly the group that he created. More rather a song that he wrote that had an impact on a production team who almost went under back in, I believe it was either the late 50s or early 60s. Many people don't know this story. So let me go ahead and explain. I don't remember the name of the company. For heaven's sake, I wasn't even alive back in the 50s or 60s. <laughs> Neither were my parents. But back then, one particular production company for music was about to go under, about to go bankrupt. And then, out of nowhere, or at least so it seemed, David Seville, which I'll just start addressing him as like that since most people actually know him like that, made a song called Witch doctor. A song that almost instantaneously saved this industry from going under. The song was so popular, so well known, that now you can find an 80s version of this song that actually is missing a verse from the original, which kind of partially bugs me, but not to a not to an, ugh, I'm not going to listen to this kind of degree. That song made, if the other music that David didn't write um, didn't make him well known, that would 
would have. That song was also featured in the original live-action movie of Alvin and the Chipmunks. The remake of it was fantastic, but you can't really have a remake of a song without the core original. And I feel like that song actually put groundwork for a specific genre of music. Or maybe not a specific genre, but a specific ideal for a type of song. That song was kind of jumpy, upbeat, and kind of ridiculous. So if you were to make a song of your own nowadays that's just kind of goofy, kind of abstract, but it's still produced, it's still a finalized song that gets paid for, it would be harder to do that probably if it wasn't for Witch Doctor. Now, how does this impact me? Now, I love the song Witch Doctor. And a lot of the time, when I go about this kind of, when I go about like mu music and comparisons to my real life, I can almost guarantee that every single song I listen to, I'll go like, this compares to this part of my life. Witch Doctor is one of the rare exceptions where that's not the case. It's one, it's one of those rare exceptions where I can listen to the song out of enjoyment, without having to mentally worry about, oh gosh, it's reminding me of this, or, oh, I'm distracted, it's reminding me of this. Instead, I just sing along and derpily go along with it. Now, though, keep in mind, as I said at the beginning of this video and series, it's not the song that I'm comparing. It's the person. The amount of creativity that came out of the man's mind just from the desire to approach something that he enjoyed is very inspirational to me. Yeah, he ended up coming with the characters of and the Chipmunks, but the amount of energy that the man had to be able to come up with the stuff he did. You can't just... You don't just pull that out of a hat. You have to be a very optimistic person to be able to come up with stuff like that. And granted, sure, nobody's perfect. Even me. I have my down points at times. Some people who even sub to me even know about this. However, the impact that listening to that, listening to this particular artist, and the impact on the world in general, that, seeing the impact on the world in general that he has had, he has given. It's even, it's had such a positive impact that it was passed on to his son, Rostam Bagdazarian Jr., who gave so much good credibility to his name and respected everything he did to a degree where he watched over the live action making of the movie Alvin and the Chipmunks and supported that kind of stuff because of how much support that man put into everything he did. And that's kind of an inspirational thing for me. It's not just the factor of making the song. It's how he went about doing it. Now, there are some people out there who I've heard who have said he was kind of a, you know, but this comes from everyone. There, there was crap that came from it. Does this make it entirely true? No. Psychological evidence kind of shows it. The, the mental state that comes off of his son proves enough that he wasn't. And I mean, yes, it's a business thing, but would it have been so well accepted? And would the music have come out so optimistically if it wasn't so much the case? Absolutely not. But that is a discussion for another day when I talk about a different artist that might come up at some point in this series. But for right now, as a starting episode, I know it was short, um, but this is just kind of experimental. It is going to continue on, but this is kind of just to give an idea of what I kind of want to press forward to do. Uh, David Seville just was one of the first things that came to my mind when it comes to historical figures, so I chose that one as a starting episode. So let me know what you guys think. 
Um, what musical art? And as a question to respond to this video for, what musical artist has impacted you in a positive way? And how? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you liked this video, make sure to push that like button and so far you can't see it anymore. And consider subscribing to the channel if you have not yet because I'm going to start doing videos like this um, frequently, very frequently. Whenever I come up with a name, I'm going to do it alongside a lot of the other live stuff, but I'm running out of things for the discussion and ranting about me, so this might be the main focus. It might be consistently this for some time. Plus, it matches the channel so much better. Either way, thanks again for watching this video, guys. Uh, check out the channel for any other uh, live content that I do, along with any other nostalgic-related topics, especially gaming and this. In the meantime, though, I'm going to head off. Thanks again, guys, and I hope to see all of you in another video. Bye for now.